Come join us on another mythical quest for the perfect paint rack. Spiking bits. Welcome back, Hobby Maniacs. I'm Rob Bear, and today we are continuing our quest for the most perfectest paint rack for all those crazy bottles of paint out there. Now, if you're like me, I don't know how it happens, but you end up with this eclectic mix of uh, big, big pot paints, little 17 mil paint dropper paints, ginormous Citadel wash paints that you have to use a 3D printed like holder in order to not <laughs> knock over. And then of course you got the coat to arms little paint bots here. So it all starts to get convoluted when you're looking up these recipes and trying to paint things a certain way or maybe match an existing paint job that you already have. Compound the fact sometimes people like to take their paints on the road and go down to their local game store or hell go hang out at adepticon and the you know paint pit that the waffles put on and hang out and paint with other folks you know so it's great to have that portable option um to take all your paints on the road but also to have them easy to grab instead of going through boxes and boxes and boxes and it's something i have personally struggled with for years <laughs> i literally have never organized i'm always looking for paints and it never seems to work out quite the way I want it to. I like to walk out into the living room, maybe watch some TV and paint while I'm watching. I don't like to be cooped up in here sometimes. Maybe I want to go down to a local game store. I just want to throw my paint racks into a box and be on my way, have a way to protect my paintbrushes as well that you see right over there. So there's a lot of different factors that come into play here for me personally. Now, recently I reviewed the Slow Fuse Gaming um, bomb rack kind of type deal which is like a stackable kind of modular thing which is great for static um, you know housing of your paints like if you're just gonna sit right here this is the paint table this is where I always am stuff is great didn't really work for me personally um, because I like to take my stuff on the road so I'm still searching I came across something the other day from Warlord Games and I hit them up of course they're over in England I hit them up I was like hey guys I really like these paint racks uh, would you like me to review them for you? And I never heard back from <laughs> But that's okay. Sometimes it isn't always about that. I went ahead and ordered them, got them in here, and, well, we're going to take a closer look at them. So let me show you what I am talking about here. So over at Warlord Games, under their home paint racks section here, it looks like they have a lot more than I even knew about uh, when I ordered these. So you got a desktop paint station laptop paint station I guess that literally means on your lap not necessarily to do with a computer <laughs> uh, this one here which I did order warlord large paint rack for $32 and its sister or little cousin the paint rack 30 pot version now these I think are laser cut by uh, an outside vendor and then they kind of uh, relabel them as theirs which there's nothing wrong with that people have been doing that for years so here you get a couple different looks at it um, here it is assembled and I'll, we will get ours assembled and show you here in a minute here you can see and this is one of the reasons it was so appealing to me once I saw it you've got all these different um, paint pots here you've got dropper bottles upside down you've got dropper bottles right side up but I think one of the cool features is it also holds any size because you can put them right over top of the holds. Now, I don't think it holds 10 across. There is 10 cutouts, it looks like, for these, but not 10 across if you're going to take the larger paint pots like the Citadel ones, uh, so to speak. So $32 here. Uh, the dimensions are 295 millimeters, 308 millimeters wide by a depth of 210 millimeters. 25 millimeters to an inch so this is well over 10 as a matter of fact it's going to be about 12 inches here and about 12 inches high by about 12 inches give or take wide and a depth of less than 12 inches right around 10 actually less than 10 inches depth of about 8 inches right there which seems to be the case the bomb the Sophie's bomb racks were also about 8 inches uh, in depth there so shipping options this was shipped out of the UK Returns and exchanges, questions, questions, add the cart. Let's take a look at the smaller one, which holds 30 pots. And I'm not sure for six, seven, seven dollars more, you get 70 pots. I feel like that's probably just a better deal just on math right there. But this looks to have lots of different options uh, to store some different things here. 30 pots, 
comfortably hold three pots of two rows, still being able to hold other useful hobby tools. Additionally, the sides are two holders capable of holding your paintbrushes, knives, etc. Height is 190, about eight width. Again, it's gonna be deep or it's gonna be wide and your depth of 200, mill 200 millimeters, so about eight inches, give or take. Now I measured out my paint desk here, add the cart, let's get them in and take a look. All right, so we did get them in. Here they are right here, come flat packed from England. I think shipping was $30 total. I got two sets of these right here. You can see this one, uh, it doesn't look as cool as this one does. I like this artwork, I don't like this artwork. If I had to choose, I would immediately buy this one right here <laughs> just because it looks a lot better. But And the back packaging has you know a lot better interface and it definitely looks cooler. Whereas this one, it's just, hey, um, some HDF cardboard that you gotta punch out right there. So let's get these on the desk here and punch them out and see what we can do. Ta-da, here it is. Welcome to a never before seen look at the Beats Lab here. We got all of my uh, accessories. This is literally my painting desk where we stream from and such. Normally uh, we have our camera right up here, which happens to be right there. <laughs> what you're looking through right here. Now here's my secret organizational shame. You can see here that all of my frequently used paints, unfortunately, have uh, found a home in this little plastic container, which Reaper sells for about nine bucks. Um, but as you can see, they don't fit in there very well. You've got pots laying on their sides, pots laying on top, things that don't even fit in here. And don't even get me started about these. They're not even going in there. Not a chance. Nothing else is going in here. It doesn't hold any paint brushes or anything like that. But I can put the top on it. I can take it out to the you know, living room or I can take it down to the local game store and we're good to go. However, enter in the Warlord Games 70 paint pot rack right here, which we've got fully assembled. It takes a while for the, the glue to dry and such, but uh, you can kind of see, you get the general idea of about how big it is and about where it will fit. Now, I measured this out just to see if it would sit here and it would. Uh, it looks like it'll be great and I may Put a second one together to go over here uh, as well to give me a little bit more options for my paints now this overall um i like the product uh let's see how many of these we can get across first off because that was a huge consideration so we know you can get 10 of these across here so one two three four five six seven we need more GDOT pots. Eight, so it looks like eight. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Seven rows of 10 dropper bottles or seven rows of GW size paint pots holding eight, so that would be 56. So it's an 80 or a 56 kind of tight deal. But again, these are gonna hold all your sizes from miniature paints, obviously the dropper bottles. You can hold, it'll hold the bigger ones here and so on and so forth. So I personally like that so far. Um, it's kind of portable, like I put it together and it's, I actually, <laughs> spoiler alert, this is a different day. <laughs> uh, I had to put on the same shirt for continuity, a little movie magic right there for you guys, but believe it or not, this is actually not the same day. I let it dry overnight just to get a feel for how strong it would be so I can tell y'all my uh, personal expert opinion it seems to be quite strong now the thing I don't like about it back here is this little bit of design this is a very small piece and if I'm trying to go portable with it I need to be very careful with this um, because this could snap off at any time now there is some extra pieces here once you punch all this stuff out I may be able to reinforce it a little bit uh, with a little bit of ingenuity here and kind of um, you know moving some things around and clipping some things off and getting it into there uh, but other than that I think for the most part uh, that's my only general concern now from an actual being a person of an actual engineering background which I do have the credentials for <laughs> uh, I was a little I found while I found I was able to put this together um, these instructions that came with it were a little difficult to understand and I think 
the the best piece of constructive advice I have for the folks at Warlord, or I guess these uh, March Attack at uh, SarasaPrecision.com, which might be um, the actual person or company that designed this for Warlord, is that it becomes very difficult when you make your parts a number, but you make steps also a number. So when your steps are a number and your parts aren't an alphabet, or your steps aren't the alphabet and your parts aren't a number, it seems like a, a very nitpicky thing, but when I'm on step one and I'm looking for spacer bars two and side panels one, there's just too many ones going on here, you know what I mean? Like, it becomes a little confusing, I think, and uh, to try to figure it all out a little bit, it, it just can get a little confusing and I feel like that would just be the easiest way uh, maybe to perhaps make it a little bit more clear for the end user uh, to be able to put this stuff together or perhaps, you know, just uh, engrave the parts or the alphabet onto each one like A or two or one or something like that make it a little bit easier so we have a parts list to kind of go by but other than that I got it together it took about mm, 20 minutes uh, overnight to dry it is very strong and very sturdy and I think the next step uh, would be to load this thing up and see how much clutter we cleared up over here uh, to, to really kind of compare if if this was totally worth it and if I need to like kind of shrink down on my <laughs> Everyday use of paints here to you know 70 in this thing All right, so here it is all put together Was able to straighten up a lot of my paints that I had laying out here got my big top I don't know 70 ish paints into here give or take still have a few more um, That's kind of situational stuff for specific products or projects but this is all of the paints that I am going to use on pretty much a daily basis. So this worked out great and pretty much held all of them. Now, the one thing I noticed here is that once you kind of flip it around, you do notice, because I want to put on this little brush attachment, tool attachment here, it's got a little bit of wiggle room. So you want to definitely be careful with this thing. I would have liked to see maybe a cross member come across here, uh, give it a little bit more strength maybe. So it's not having this torsion here, kind of going back and forth, but it is what it is. And this little tool accessory piece just kind of pops in right here. And this is great because you can put your brushes and things in it. And then you don't have to worry about those when you go portable and you just throw it in a box uh, with, you know, whatever you might be working on and go down to the gaming store or go out to you know the couch uh, to work on a few things out there perhaps and that way you don't have extra things are roaming about so overall I definitely like this product here it, it just is a little cumbersome and I'm trying not to um, try not to put too much stress on it because I don't like that that piece right there kind of wiggles a little bit too much for my liking but it definitely cleaned up my desk and now I have a whole bunch of paints this is some stuff we'll be working on stream tonight live all right here all ready to go now the next one up is the smaller version that's the 30 that's like seven dollars less but I feel like at seven dollars less unless you have a height uh, requirement you probably don't need this you might as well just go with the full 70 here so this is about eight inches tall it's gonna be 12 wide and about eight inches deep as well right there and it's got this big scoop spot across the top here that you could definitely double up or maybe even triple up some paints but then you want to be aware that that back piece is gonna wiggle a little bit so just kind of keep that in mind there but don't let it fool you you can get extra paints in here but they're not gonna be bleacher style all the way up like over here they are gonna be this kind of short stack um, little kind of configuration right here so this one's kind of neat this one's 25 again um, you know there was a little bit of confusion on how to put it together and then the side paint tool racks don't quite come out as easy as I think they should it's a little bit difficult there I'm not quite gonna mess with it right here on camera but overall I, uh, I would have liked to have seen that designed a little bit better. And like I said, this one is 12 wide. Now tall, it's gonna be, it's gonna be a little bit. It's gonna be about 12 as well, just like we said, and about eight inches deep. 
Yep, it's eight inches deep right there. So it, it's very practical to fit into a lot of places, a lot of low places, a lot of big places um, that you know you just want to kind of take up all that space. I really, really like, of all the racks I've tried and all the different configurations and things I've tried over the years so far, this one is definitely my favorite. And I'm gonna give it three out of five spikies just because of the fact I would have gone higher. I would have gone like maybe 3.5 to 4, but I feel like that little problem with the back design right there, I don't like it. it, it man, I just feel like I'm going to break that back piece. But everything else I'm loving about this thing, it does, you know, it doesn't seem like it's going to bow or anything. It seems like it's the appropriate height and the appropriate structure to support the weight. I just don't like picking this thing up and touching it more than just simple adjustments right there. But overall, I think Warlord's got a great product on their hands for $32 plus shipping here to the States. I think it ran 11 bucks or something for the standard um, for two weeks. I think it's a great, I think it's a, a very good product. Like I said, three out of five spikies right there all day. Can definitely, I would go higher, but we're at three out of five. Definitely recommend it for everyone else. Now, if you like these type of review and kind of first look type videos here on the channel. Make sure you work out your hobby muscles and subscribe. Hit that subscribe button and of course, turn on a little bell symbol right next to it and get those notifications popping so you can be the very first to like and comment on all of these great video features. Deleted scenes, bonus content, all the interviews and post game wrap up videos can be located in the Hall of Veterans on thelongward.net. Visit thelongward.net today and try a week completely free with no strings attached. That's not all. TheLongWord.net is also your hobby resource for exclusive early access with an ad-free experience to all your favorite videos. Members of the Hall of Veterans gain early exclusive access to multiple hobby videos.